proceeds all to the Philippians. Every time I pray for all of you, I pray with joy, remembering how you have helped to spread the good news from the day you first heard it right up to present. I am quite certain that the one who began this good work in you will see that it is finished when the day of Christ Jesus comes. God knows how much I miss you all, loving you as Christ Jesus loves you. My prayer is that you love, your love for each other may increase more and more and never stop improving your knowledge and deepening your perception so that you can always recognize what is best. This will help you to become pure and blameless and prepare you for the day of Christ when you will reach the perfect goodness which Jesus Christ produces in us for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to Father Ordinaria and Sisters Kathleen and Ellen for 
the invitation to join you for this class of thanksgiving and farewell to the Douglas of Charity. I'm also grateful to the clergy who have joined us on what is partly a happy and partly a sad occasion as we say goodbye to the sisters who have been part of the diocese and of the Christian landscape here for so very long. I'm also grateful to everyone that's helped to make this a beautiful liturgy in anticipation of all the singing still to come and, and all the, I think there might be a little bit of fun fighting later on, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, looking forward to that as well and a chance to say hello to everyone too. According to the book, I see you've written 97 years on the handout, but according to our order, it says you got here in 1898. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how those two numbers add up. I get it, that's what I thought it was. So, so 97 years in Roswell, but it's covering three centuries, actually, of our presence here, 120 three or something years like that, um, which is a wonderful, wonderful gift to us here in the diocese. So in 1898, the Daughters of Charity officially came and settled in the Archdiocese, and their presence has always been a welcome one. They have gone about their important work at the service of the most vulnerable, quietly, and with great affection and dedication often unnoticed, but always appreciated by those who know of their work. They also figure in some of the historical high points in the diocese, including the memorable visit of Pope St. John Paul in 1982. I have a large red chair that he sat in in my chapel <laughs> to improve it. And by the way, I never sit in it, just in case we were But the sisters didn't come to the diocese in the hope that one day they would be entertaining the Bishop of Rome at tea. They came here to look after the smallest, the poorest, the most excluded, and they have done that with great heart for these last 120 something years. It is a length of time and a great legacy that will lead many to look back upon their departure with nostalgia and with regret. I prefer, however, to dwell upon their good works and the many blessings received from God at their merciful hands. The goodness and simplicity and discipline and dedication is what people always remember and by all by the mercy of God's grace. We don't always know it or see it at the time, but often when we look back, as we do now at the conclusion of their time with us, we do so with deep gratitude to them and to Almighty God for the richness of their love and service that was their gift to us and the blessings of God that came to us through them, the ones we see here and the many sisters who went before them. And before I get them blushing, I'm sure the sisters would agree with St. Paul when he says that we are only the earthen vessels of God's own love. And that it is to God and to Christ's disciples that all the, the Christ's disciples always give him the glory. Our glory as daughters and sons in the Son is to have had a little part to play in God's plan to have had a part in bestowing his love and care by those who needed it and then received it. And just as all of us are neither perfect nor completely worthy to be vessels of God's mercy, so the daughters of charity, whether they were perfect or saintly or a little less so, would have all of them been here with the firm intention of giving their hearts to the work at hand and to bring God's love to everyone in their care, whether worthy or not, whether grateful or not, whether it was acknowledged or not. Wherever the daughters of charity have gone, they have been a symbol in the popular mind, I think, of what it is 
what is expected of a woman consecrated to God, when founded they were at the cutting edge of active Christian living, gradually becoming a new form of religious life, but always retaining their simplicity and their closeness to the poor. And I think that's what's always kept them kind of real. This in keeping with their founder's intention and what we might call the very heartedness of the Vincentian movement was always seen perhaps most keenly in the lives of its consecrated men and women. With gratitude for all they have done for us here, we hope and pray that the sisters now leaving us will continue to be faithful to that calling to love and to closeness to the poor. And your sisters, thank you for all that you and your predecessors have done for us in St. Andrews and Edinburgh to make the love of God known among all of those on the margins. May the Lord bless you abundantly for your goodness and may he accompany you in all your future endeavours. Amen.
in friendship and help to one another. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We pray for spread as it reaches out in love to create a community of faith and friendship within the diocese. May they face the future with trust in God's providence and a deep sense of his love. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We pray for the whole family of St. Joseph's and the many people, past and present, who have been part of that community, the people we support, their families, and all members of staff. May we always be true to the values we profess so that all are treated with respect and achieve their potential. Come, Lord Jesus. As the sisters leave Rosewell, we give thanks for their years of service in the Archdiocese. We pray that the spirits of St. Vincent and St. Louis will continue to flourish here and that all those in need will be served with respect and compassion. Come, Lord Jesus. We take a moment now to bring our own prayers before the Lord. And we ask today to pray with us as we say, Hail Mary.
was, Come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design we formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with our pen we acclaim.
will we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will the reconcile us to your son. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May we give us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your life, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent and St. Louis, and all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence you are alive and unfailing. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation be pray on the Lord that's the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which is servant of Francis our Pope, our Bishop Leo, your president, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your soul. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <coughs> to all invited brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world that all is good. <laughs>
just to judge wisely the things that happen. Mm -hmm. And hold firm to the things that happen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. remaining 
houses were those associated with St. Joseph's, namely Inveresk and at the last post, Thalethi Street. On the 20th of January, 1924, four sisters arrived at the newly named St. Joseph's, formerly called White Hills, to get the house, or the mansion, which had taken five years to build in the 1940s, no, sorry, the 1840s, prepared for the first residence. It took the sisters three months to clean and prepare the neglected building, which had been used as a Red Cross hospital during World War I. Sister Scanlon, the first superior, broke down in health as a result and was replaced by Sister Claire Duffy. It was a tough beginning, with no running water and no electricity until 1930, mm -hmm. and heating only by wood fires. But after the preparation was completed, there were eight residents being cared for by the end of 1924, aged from five years to 20 years. By 1944, there were 257 residents. Over the subsequent years, the building was expanded to meet the needs of the expanding service. More accommodation, a beautiful chapel, a nurse's home, a special school, a sister's house, and a swimming pool were among those additions. All indications of a service expanding to meet the needs of the people at its heart. From the 1960s onwards, there were many adaptations to the social and health care provided, as standards change and new approaches to people with physical and learning disabilities developed away from a medical model towards supported independent living in the community. In 1999, the home closed altogether. And all the residents of St. Joseph's were finally settled into their new accommodation in and around Rosewell. White Hill House itself was sold for development as residential accommodation. Um, I was going to tell you about the visit of, of Pope John Paul, that's why I'm hesitating, but he's, he's already been mentioned on Pope John Paul II, but indeed that was a splendid and wonderful occasion and many of us will never ever forget it. The province established St. Joseph's Services to coordinate care in the community for people with learning disabilities. As I recall, it was a mammoth task. The partnership that we still enjoy with the local authority in Lothian became closer. And there are were, there were people here today who were intimately responsible and in charge of that huge transition. With the closure of the home, the sisters' residence for this and other pastoral work which had taken place in the area around Rosewell moved to Inveresk. Whilst in Inveresk, the sisters continued to serve at St. Joseph's, other sisters in this house were involved in spread, pastoral care for homeless people, hospital chaplaincy, vocations work, and catechetical work for deaf children. The sisters moved from Inveresk back to Rosewell, Carnethy Street, on the 6th of March, 2014. As we prepare to close our house in Rosewell, it is good to pay tribute to all those sisters who have lived and worked in Rosewell, spanning 97 years and to acknowledge the enormous collaboration with so many staff, volunteers, local authorities, and other agencies which have brought St. Joseph's to this day. It's in good hands. We have a wonderful team led by Roger Hoda, and it's now a fully thriving independent charity. Thanks to Rob, his team, its current volunteers, the people we support, and the trustees. More recently, Sister Kathleen Page, who spoke to you at the beginning of Mass, was placed in St. Joseph's in 2015 to serve the pastoral needs of the people 
schools supported by St. Joseph's. And she was appointed local leader in 2016. Thank you, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. Angela, Sister Angela Hannaby, moved from Inverest when Carnethy Street opened and is with us today. And recently moved to London. They will be so greatly missed and they too are very sad. However, we do hope that the connection between St. Joseph's and the sisters will continue in other ways. The sisters in other parts of Scotland, Lanark and Glasgow, will continue to take an interest. And St. Joseph's remains part of the family of the Daughters of Charity as it has joined the wider group of charities called Daughters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul Services. This ensures the ongoing intimate connection between St. Joseph's and the Daughters of Charity, including ongoing training in the Vincentian values and the commitment of two Daughters of Charity as trustees. Sister Kathleen Fox, who did the first reading, is now the chair of the trustees and she's joined by Sister Maria Roth as a trustee. Recently, um, they replaced Sister Eileen Clancy and Sister Kathy Cobb. So you see, it's not a complete ending, but rather a different way of being. Returning to the very beginning in 1894, 273 sisters have served in this diocese. 178 of whom lived and worked at St. Joseph's. So today it's my job to thank and contribute to them all, those who have lived and worked here. But mostly, I want to pay tribute to you and your predecessors, your families, the people of this beautiful part of Scotland with whom our sisters have been in relationship for so many years. We formally extend our warm gratitude to Archbishop Leo and the priests and people of this diocese and to Father Alan, hanging here, for his hospitality today but also his great pastoral care of the sisters. And indeed his predecessors were the same. Thank you also to the wonderful musicians and to all who prepared, to all of you who prepared today's liturgy and took part. It's a sign and a symbol of a different sort of warmth that the heating can provide. It's the warmth that exists from person to person in this wonderful place of love. Thank you, all of you, for all you have been to us. I speak now for two seconds personally to the people that we support in our service and their families. You are the reason for our being. It's you who create this place of light and warmth. You are our inspiration and our joy. Without you, we have nothing. You are the reason for this special place. So we entrust to you and to all who live and work in St. Joseph's, the future. We know that you will continue to love and care for each other. And with you, again, we move into a new future. We'll be there, not in the same way, but we will be. And I thank God and you for all that we have done together and all we have been to each other. The sisters never work alone. It's not possible, and it wouldn't be right. Through all these years, there will have been times of grief, hardship, suffering, even hurt. And if anyone, here or not here, has been hurt by any daughter of charity, we apologise at this time. I think Archbishop Leo put it beautifully when he said all that any of us come for 
is to, be, to do good. But it does happen. In those times, though, the times of hurt and the times of joy and celebration, in those times, we build community together and we minister to each other in inclusivity and friendship. We stand shoulder to shoulder in the name of Christ, in the church, and in outreach from the church. We owe you all a huge debt of gratitude. Thank you. We leave, sorry, we leave the village reluctantly and with sadness, but carrying fond memories and wishing you every blessing. Please pray for your patience. Ask yourselves, when was the last time you even thought of mentioning to a young person that they might, might like to become a sister or a priest? The only reason we're leaving is because we have no young sisters coming behind us. Think about that. And if you can, do something about it. And finally, if we, the Daughters of Charity, have witnessed in any way to our charism. We pray that you will continue to love and support each other and particularly look out for those who are in any kind of suffering. Stand with them in the parishes, in Spread, in St. Joseph's, in your workplaces, in your families. Notice those who struggle. And in all aspects of your lives, we wish you the love and peace of Jesus. May Mary, the mother of Jesus, protect you always. Amen.